All right, so in this video, what we're gonna cover is how to get descriptives out of JASP, separating things by group. There are a couple of ways to do this, um, but generally you're gonna have a hypothesis that you're wanting to test, and so it'll be part of that hypothesis test, an ANOVA or a t-test. But for my course, um, you might need to calculate them sort of separate from a hypothesis. And so let's talk about how to do that. Or let's say you're just trying to get the means to make a graph which is the specific problem we're having in the class. So I'm gonna open JASP and I'm just gonna open a file that they have as part of JASP, but you can do this with um, your data set or your homework data set. So I'm going to open one of their examples and use the kitchen rolls data set. So what this data set has, oops, okay, do it, <laughs> good grief, um, is a set of different levels of conditions and specifically, we can focus on looking at their sex and whether or not they're a student. And so there's kind of two issues at play here. We can calculate um, descriptive statistics on, let's say, age. So I'm going to click at descriptives, descriptives, and I can pick age here and then click, oops, not plots, sorry, statistics. And I could pick whatever statistics I was interested in if I maybe want to add the standard error. And I could work on making a graph, but there's only one here. And at the moment, JASP does not have a good way to split by, let's say I wanted the gender. Because if I move gender over, or sex here, it's just going to show me that I have 102 participants. And I could look at um, the frequency table for that particular thing. But I can't get the means by gender. Um, because they don't have that feature quite yet. So the easiest way to do this is to cheat. And like I said, normally you would be doing this from um, a hypothesis, but if you're wanting to do this separate from a hypothesis, this is when you do this. So if your um, variable has only two levels, and so you have one variable with two levels. So let's kind of make a little chart here of what we're doing. Oh, I've, somehow I have screwed this up. There we go. Let's open Word. <clears throat> slowly but surely <laughs> all right kind of make a flow chart of how this will work okay. so if I have one variable okay, and it only has two levels okay. remember what about by that I mean groups we can do a t-test and it specifically will be an independent t-test to get the means. Okay. So what I want to do is click t-tests, independent samples. Right. I'm going to take my two levels, move it over here to grouping variable, pick whatever variable I'm interested in. So we did age a minute ago, but we could do this neo one now. And then click um, descriptives. So we put our, our grouping, our independent variable in the grouping variable box, our variable we want to calculate those statistics on. So I actually could do several of them at once if I wanted to um, in the dependent variable box and then click descriptives. And that will give me the mean and standard deviation and standard error for all of them. And I can use this to uh, import into Excel to make a single bar graph. The problem with that is let's say you have more than two levels. So another example of that is condition here. So the condition variable has multiple levels. So I could click descriptors real quick, um, take these two things out, and just look at a frequency table for condition. It has four levels. So if I wanted to use that independent t hack, so I'm not actually going to look at these t test values because I don't really care. I'm looking at it because it'll give me these degrees, uh, these um, uh, means and standard deviations. I can take out gender here and put in condition, but it's going to be upset with me because it says the grouping variable can only have two levels. So another shortcoming in JASP at the moment is that I can't pick, if I have multiple variables, I can't pick which of the uh, multiple levels, I can't pick which two there are. Okay. Now one solution to this problem is to create different Excel files and separate them out, but that's not the fastest way to do this. 
So the most efficient thing I can do actually instead is to run a one-way ANOVA. So I'm gonna click ANOVA here and ANOVA. This is very specifically for issues with um, between subjects variables, so ANOVA. Okay. And what I wanna do now is under fixed factor, put in my <clears throat> independent variable and then put my dependent variable here. So I can only do one of these at a time, but that's okay because I could just switch them out. Uh, click, uh, where is it at? Descriptive plots, I think. Nope, additional options. Sorry, I've already forgotten. Move this over and that'll give me the marginal means. Okay. I can also click display descriptive statistics if you want standard deviation. If you want standard error, use marginal means. If you want standard deviation, use uh, descriptives. Okay. And so that'll give me the information I need. So we're going to use uh, the ANOVA to get the means. If you have two variables, okay, my shift is not working. <clears throat> you definitely have to go with ANOVA. So it doesn't really matter how many levels there are. So, okay. and by conditional means, I mean that it's the, the split of the variables. So let's try that here. I've got my ANOVA pulled up, but I can click through one more time just to show you. So click ANOVA, ANOVA. Okay. Um, all this is filled in, but let's say I wanted a different variable. So I'm just gonna pick one here. And instead of condition, let's say I wanted to do a, not age, sex by whether or not they're a student. That still has descriptive selected. So it gives me the conditional means which is the um, female, no, female, yes. Okay, this is not the best example because this variable only has one person here. But we could also try this instead by condition. So let's see what that, that works out a little better. So we got mean standard deviation. If you instead want standard error, take the interaction here, this where it's both variables at once, move it over, and now I can get the standard error. So it kind of depends on which one you're interested in. For my course, we've been doing means and standard deviations, but if instead you're interested in standard error, you can use that. Um, and then I would use this to copy over to Excel to make a plot. So it kind of depends. I would say using the ANOVA one will get you the answer every single time, but if you have only two levels, you could also use independent T as an option to get those means. So that's just a quick video on how to separate out variables if you're just interested in calculating the means by um, by groups instead, uh, um, and you're not interested in running a specific analysis just yet.